Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be set up death and finishers for our combat. So here we are back in our scene and first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to correct a mistake that was pointed out uh, after the last uh, video of applying damage. So the way it worked is in the example I was, you know, I hit middle mouse button to uh, target on this character and um, you know applying the damage everything works fine however someone pointed out if you don't actually target that character um, with the middle mouse button then uh, it will ignore the defense so what we're going to do is we're going to go to combat here and we have the on left mouse press and we have this formula this action now um, I created a prefab out of this in that same video that basically had everything as you can see, um, but it was just target instead. Now, if you don't have that prefab, no worries, just create a new action here. There we go. Um, then uh, copy over that formula and paste it in here. Now make sure you remove it here because uh, we don't, we're not going to use it here and it's just here. And here you basically uh, change a character target to just target. Um, And there we go. And you save that as a uh, prefab. So you drop that in here and that's it. Now on our um, skills, um, we're going to do a um, run actions. Yeah, there we go. Um, run actions, um, let it finish. That needs to be turned on. Um, and then prefabs and we're going to drag that in. Now because it's a reference outside of our scene, it will keep that reference uh, just fine. So it's a project wide reference. So perfect. And then we just copy paste it all over. And now it will work um, the way it should. So it's going to get the stats from the target that is being hit at that point. Instead of trying to define those stats uh, before actually hitting a character and that's why if we weren't targeting anyone um, it wouldn't recognize the target to um, get those stats from so yeah simple fix um, but it had to be done cool um, so next thing uh, that is up is we're going to um, basically uh, set up our um, we're going to be setting up our uh, finisher skills so we'll randomize it. So the way we're going to do it is we'll create an option to have these. So I've been playing some Assassin's Creed and you know, you have finishers when you kill people. It doesn't always happen. There's different ones and it makes it more cool, cinematic, you know, etc. However, after a certain amount of time, you might get a bit tired of it as well. So we want to make sure that it's not a color, it's a Boolean, and that is a choice. So um, um, death uh, finishers enabled um, is true. There we go. Um, and then it will play. So by default, it will play. And then we can create a menu option where you can turn off that bool um, and then it won't do the finishers and it will just kill the character instead. Awesome. So um, what we need to do on our uh, enemy character, um, going to collapse all of this, going to add a trigger. Um, if you're familiar with Game Creator 1, this worked really similar. So on attribute change um, of uh, self of this character, um, then we're going to do HP, um, run conditions, and then we're going to create some conditions. There we go. Let's just, um, oh, sorry. Let's just drag those in. And it's going to be really simple. So if attribute, uh, compare attribute, um, I think self will still work in this case. I'm not sure, I hope so. Um, let's just for the sake of it do character. Um, always a bit unsure about that. Um, and then not equals, but less or equal to zero in the rare, rare case where for some reason it will go down past minimum, uh, past zero. Um, it's just safer to do it this way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, skill, play skill for now. It's just going to be for now. Target, we're going to select um, character, character, and we're going to be dragging in our character. 
Um, there we go. Melee weapon, we just do currently equipped. Um, and then player skill, and uh, that's the skill we need to create. So um, yeah, let's start off with creating that skill. So um, the skill will consist of two things, uh, the actual skill file and a reaction file. So the skill file is for the player. So skill um, finisher zero one. Um, we'll do two just to have the randomizing, but it's mostly just duplicating and changing a couple of small things. Um, and then um, melee uh, reaction. And then reaction uh, finisher zero one. There we go. Cool. So we can open this up. We can already drag this in just to uh, well, we need to be able to drag it in. So let's set this to motion warp and already drag it in just to make sure we don't forget it. Now, when it comes to um, the skills, we've already addressed this before. So I'm not going to do any of this. I don't find that necessary. There's no charging. Um, strike, uh, no strikers. Uh, we're not actually doing, this is a finisher. Um, so damage is irrelevant, it's a finisher. Um, trail, you can have that on. Uh, effects, you can add all of the effects you want. Um, and then we need a melee clip. So what an uh, animation clip. So I'm using the same an uh, Paladin anim set. Now there's so many types of um, animation packs that have stuff like this, so it's not that special. Basically you need an uh, attacking skill and you need a synced uh, reaction skill that is the, the hit reaction. That's it. So on these, uh, make sure that we have uh, this, uh, well, set it like this basically. Um, and same for here. Um, let's already do that on this one as well. So we already have it set up. And then for uh, this hit uh, too. There we go. Not sure why loop was even turned on by the developer at all. Then on hit, I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to rename it to um, set motion hit death. Um, I just want to get this done straight away. Then on here, we're going to actually turn this on, set it to center of mass. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the death part of the animation. So as you can see here, um, he's dead here. Um, and then we're going to be um, Oh, adjusting, adjusting it. There we go. There we go. Um, no looping. Um, I don't want this to loop. It um, it can just be active after that, um, and that's it. That's the entire clip. Save. There we go, um, and that's the death state. So we'll be using that in a bit. Then um, let's then drag these into our skills. So first of all, um, we need this clip. So um, keep it open and then um, drag in the attack. There we go. And I just want to make sure that we do the reaction straight away as well. So add reaction, no transition out, by the way, zero transition out. Um, from any direction, it's irrelevant. Um, click here, and then we're going to be dragging in our uh, clip. And not the death one, the normal hit one, just to be sure. And there we go. Perfect. Awesome. So for this one, we're technically uh, done. We, we will add a couple of things, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do for the hit reaction. For the finisher, there's actually not that much either. So we're going to go into uh, this mode here. Um, let's get rid of this. Um, this is the hit part, um, but we're not actually hitting. This is a finisher. Now we can re-add this, just drag it across and remove this as well, re-add it. And now we have our motion warping. Now the motion warping ideally would be a bit longer than, um, than it is in this clip. It's actually really short meaning um, <laughs> unfortunately this is not a perfect finisher it won't always align that well um, th there's very little i can do about that unfortunately um, it's just how this clip is so yeah there's not a lot of movement to warp to 
Um, however, we're going to make it as ideal as can be. So we're going to select um, quad in out here, uh, target. Um, we need to set that as well. So um, the way this works is um, we do a target uh, close. There we go. Uh, this is the distance. So let's do that 1.5. Can even make it two. That's fine. And then follow location is fine. And then uh, look at self. Perfect. So this will um, aid in the warping, making sure the positioning is going to be more aligned. Now, again, if you have a clip where um, there's an actual step first before doing the attack, that's amazing. That's even better. Um, it will give more time to properly align. This is really short, making it less than perfect, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it looks cool anyway. <laughs> Cool, um, so we've got that part. Um, we can leave the transition uh, out the way it is. Um, we just need to make the transition in a bit. Uh, yeah, like this pretty much. Awesome, so that's pretty much it for this uh, clip. There's not much else we have to do here. Um, that's pretty much, yeah, pretty much it. So we can close skill mode and we've got our finisher. Now, um, there will be a couple of things we'll need to address as well. So first of all, um, the way the targeting system is set up right now, it will just look for the closest candidate, which is this character. And then this character then will, um, you know, will become the target. But what if there's no candidate? then it will still try to find a target that isn't one. So the camera is going to bug out like crazy. Um, so what we need to do on combat, um, we have our uh, targeting conditions here. So this is the targeting condition. And what we need to do, so by default, cycle to closest target, etc. Now this will be the problem. What if there's no target? It will still try to do that. The camera will still try to look at a target that doesn't exist. It will be weird. So we can do a distance, compare distance, and then we do player. Then we do character, uh, character. And then here, which character is it? We're going to do tag and then find by tag. And we're going to use uh, enemy. Now for the distance, um, less or equal to, well, that's up to you how far you want the lock to work. Uh, I think five is enough, otherwise it becomes a bit, uh, could be almost cheating a bit. Um, then that means that the character needs to have the tag of enemy. If you don't have it, just add, add it, just press add tag. Uh, enemy tag, there we go. Um, and that means that if we are locked into this character, we kill him then the camera will bug out because there's nothing to lock on anymore. So what we need to do is um, we can do it on the finisher. We can do it on uh, the reaction. It's up to you uh, on finish. I'm what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go to those same conditions again. Then the other branch that resets everything. Um, we're going to copy that. We're going to go to finisher here. Uh, on finish. There we go. And then we copy over the second part as well, the shot. And we're going to paste that in as well. Now, we won't have our scene reference here, so we will select main shot. And the important thing here is that you make sure that you have the main shot set as a main shot and none of the others. So if you have multiple shots, make sure only one is set as the main shot. That's the one you revert back to. Sweet. Then on that character, because we don't want to be able to lock on to a dead body again, um, on the reaction, what we're going to do is we're going to go state. Um, and that was completely misspelled. Uh, state, there we go, enter state, um, self, and then state, we're just going to do a animation clip. Let's look up that death one, which it will be named the same. There we go, perfect. Make sure there's no transition whatsoever. And the layer is like 20, something crazy. <laughs> Perfect. Then what we need to do as well is we need to set the tag, change tag, um, self, 
to uh, dead. Now, setting to un uh, untagged never worked in Game Creator 1, so maybe in Game Creator 2 it works. But it's just better to create a new tag just for dead and you're done, basically. Um, and then, <laughs> don't make my mistake, actually this needs to be on exit, of course. Uh, not on the start, so apologies for that. And there we go. Perfect. And then what we're going to do as well is we'll have the kill character, which will disable the collider. Uh, so we can just walk through. No issues there. Perfect. So let's give this uh, let's give this a go. So the way we'll work is I'm going to highlight the character and I'm actually going to duplicate him for now. So you actually also see that what we changed with uh, the damage actually has effect. So um, the character in front of me, um, let's turn on those gizmos for now. Yeah, that's that one. So let's expand those traits. 50. I don't think I actually did select a skill here, did I? No, I didn't. So let's go out of the mode. Apologies. Um, let's grab in that skill. Um, skill finisher 01. And then that needs to be on, I think it needs to be on the character uh, player sword. I'm actually not really sure if it needs to be on the combos. But let's just add it anyway. Um, H. Again, I'm not really sure this is necessary. Well, but we'll find out later. It doesn't really matter. Um, cool. So yeah, I think now we've got all of the basics. So let's try that again. There we go. So let's turn on those gizmos. We have the stats. Um, let's see if it now takes, so I'm not locking in, as you can see, I'm not locked, never locked, and I apply the damage, and as you can see, the, his defense rating is taken into account, because um, it's 12 instead of like dying straight away. Then I'm going to hit again, and it's going to apply the finisher, and you know, he's dead, and yeah, that's, uh, he's dead. <laughs> cool. So um, let's turn off those gizmos. There we go. So now I'm going to do a lock. And this is, so as you can see, I'm disabling the lock, 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 disabling. Um, so now I'm locked again. I apply the hits. And nothing is happening because I copied him over. <laughs> I copied him over before I made the changes in his conditions. So apologies. Um, but that's all right. That's all right. Let's just play, uh, do go into play mode again. And this time we'll just lock. There we go. So we're locked in. Applies the finisher, lovely. Um, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it's still an object. We can disable the collider that's would, that's up to you. I mean, yeah, we can see. Anyway, so yeah, the finisher works perfectly. Um, it's uh, nicely aligned. Now it's not perfect, like I said. Um, we can try to improve that a tiny bit. So some of the things we can do, for example, um, is um, especially when we're um, when we're not locked on to improve it a tiny bit is we already have the motion warping doing its piece. But again, like I mentioned, the motion warping is not perfect because in my clip, it's such a small portion um, that, you know, that kind of causes an issue with movement. So one of the things we can do, for example, um, is we can set, um, so target, So we set this character as the target for the player. There we go. So he becomes a target. Then we'll... Um, where is it? Under player. There we go. 
So we'll add um, this, kind of like the locking does, um, but then with, when we're not locking, uh, on purposely not locked. There we go. And then we add a small weight. I mean, it's not necessary, but it, it will help a tiny bit. If you don't want to do it, don't do it, by the way. You can just avoid that. Um, and there we go. So this will help a bit. It's again, not perfect. Um, ideally, your finishers just have a bit more movement. Um, like when you look at, um, well, as I said, all said that I mentioned, first part of the meta clip uh, of the skill clip would actually have a bit of walking, um, allowing you to easily with motion warp get the character in the right place. So the bigger the intro piece is, the better, actually. Um, it will help a lot with, uh, with the warping. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's give this a go. So this time I'm not going to lock on because locked on, it looks good in my opinion. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's still pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That was actually really nice. Um, Then let's try to polish it a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So um, here we have, um, da -da -da. here we have our skill. So um, a couple of the things that we're going to do is um, let's enter skill mode. That makes it easier. So we're going to add some frames. This is the first one. So here, there we go. And we're going to do. Um, burst shake burst main camera 0 0.1 maybe this is a bit big <laughs> but we'll see we'll just keep it like this for now uh, there we go um, let's copy this so that's the first hit the bomb then uh, the second hit I think this would be the part where you hit then paste it again And then again, when the shield hits, maybe the timing is not perfect, you know, time it better, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Cool. So we've got that as well. So let's, uh, let's give it another go. So let me lock in. That looks awesome, by the way, that looks really cool. Nice, um, sweet. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the finisher. So that is, uh, that's awesome. Uh, definitely, you know, polish it a bit, try to get it in a, a bit cleaner if you'd like. Um, but I think this is, uh, this is pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this one and rename this to finisher two. I don't think it actually has an ID, does it? That's interesting. Okay. Um, then we have the set uh, attack. So here we're going to uh, place the second attack. So let's go into skill mode. Um, let's adjust um, those settings again. Okay, so we can be a bit more gen uh, generous with the motion warping here. That seems like the first hit. And then that seems like the second hit. And then that's the third, about the third. Awesome, cool. Um, everything else we can leave the same. Um, doesn't need to be any uh, any difference here. So we can keep that. Um, we only need to reference, of course, our uh, different reaction file. So then we need to uh, duplicate that. So let's set that up. Um, finish it two. On this, um, we'll need to um, select our second hit. There we go. Um, 
awesome. Then let's um, make sure the finisher two references the finisher two. There we go. Um, cool. So yeah, uh, not that much change. A tiny bit more area for motion warping, which generally um, will be definitely will be a positive thing. Let me change that radius to one point five um, instead. I think two was a bit too much. The dist I don't think the ter uh, distance is two. I think the distance is one point one. Okay. Um, let me just play this one more time just to get uh, to see if that distance is better now because um, I feel like there was a tiny bit of a gap um, where the um, where they should have been connecting yeah that's better that's better much better okay um, that small glitch I'll try to see if there's something I can do about that but I highly highly doubt it um, cool so how can we now randomize this? So when we go to our conditions, we basically have, um, you know, uh, let's actually check that bool. Uh, bool comparison, um, variable, global name variable, um, hero, um, death finishers is enabled. Then it will do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of new uh, actions. So uh, actions, one, two, three. I'm going to do three of them. So basically one will be um, the first finisher. Should have actually duplicated it later. <laughs> Let me do that. Um, so let's uh, let's copy this over. So um, actually, no, we only need to copy this over. Uh, that's fine. No, we, do, we don't. No, we need to copy everything over. Apologies. Apologies. Um, so character, um, the lock, the small weight, and there we go, skill finisher. Perfect. So now I'm going to duplicate this one um, here. I'm going to select finisher two. There we go. Um, just for safety purposes, I'll I'll add it here. I'm still not sure that's actually necessary. Oh well. Um, but yeah, we can also just put it on the H, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, there we go. Cool. Um, so we just need to reference uh, the characters again. And on this one as well. So character and character, perfect. Um, yeah, that's it, right? I'm not missing anything. No, it's just a different skill playing, perfect. And then um, we'll add one more action um, that is simply just going to um, ragdoll. Can actually do two, let's do two. So actions. You know what, instead of doing uh, doing that, we're just going to do a, uh, we're not going to do a ragdoll because the results are just not that nice. Um, not really a big fan of the way it works. Um, and I might be missing something, but we'll just do a gesture, play gesture, um, character. There we go. Then um, the animation clip. So I'm going to choose um, from here a death five, which is a small bounce back. Um, there we go. Um, no transition out. And then we're actually going to copy over that state. So enter state again, character, character, and then drag it in. Then animation clip, no transition, layer 20. Um, and um, where was it? Um, hit death. There we go. This one, cool. So we'll do that instead of a ragdoll. 
um, simply because the ragdoll just um, oh wait not duplicated yet my bad uh, the ragdoll just doesn't look that nice so one of the things we uh, need to be sure of as well is that we actually add um, that we can no longer select these characters as uh, targets that is quite important so um, and we need to do that in our uh, finishes as well so finisher then we're going to do um, candidate remove target candidate and then target is self there we go um, we copy that over to the second one as well and let's make sure that is actually um, it's actually on top for both of them let's make sure we do the first and copy it over uh, then we add it to our actions here there we go and then kill character um, the tag thing change tag uh, character character to death dead perfect and yeah let's be sure that um, in our conditions here We copy over this as well. It's quite a bit of a setup, fully aware. Um, could have actually put these in a, uh, especially given that it's just a main shot, could have put these in some actions. Oh well, that's, uh, yeah, all of this could have been put in uh, into one action actually that we always execute. Would have made things all five would have made things tons easier. Um, and that's okay, we might do that later on. Um, and then, yeah, we just have to be sure that, um, so this find by tag, um, it's not perfect. It does the job, I think 10 has to be done. It does the job, but it's definitely not perfect. It will sometimes still, for some reason, lock, even if that tag just doesn't exist anymore, um, which is just really, really confusing. I'll try to find a better way for the next video. Um, even though this way should work fine, if the tag is no longer there, then it shouldn't be locking anymore. But for some reason, it still sometimes just happens. Um, wait, we needed to duplicate that character first, so we can actually um, see at least one of those death animations. There we go. Um, and, <laughs> and I'm doing this and we're not actually randomizing anything yet. We only set up the actions. So um, in our conditions here, we still have this. So um, let's remove all of that. There we go. And then here, we're going to do a run uh, random actions. So uh, this is a custom one. I know there's one in the hub, but for me, that threw a couple of errors and it just didn't work. Um, so that's why I created my own. It's not the prettiest, but it does the job. Um, actions, uh, actions, and actions, there we go. Um, and then just drag them in. Um, there we go. And I was going to duplicate this one, so let's duplicate that. And perfect. Then let's create the alternate branch as well. So um, HP of our character is zero, but if we have the bool disabled, so we don't have finishers selected in our menu, this could be in a, like an accessibility setting then it's just going to run, uh, nope, run, run, run. Uh, it's just going to be running um, the default, these ones, for example, perfect. So yeah, let's give this a go. Hopefully everything is now working as it should. Um, and the, those custom run actions are in the description by the way, um, but I'm sure I'll upload them to the hub as well. God, I love this, it's so cool. Cool, um, so we're no longer locked, at least that's a good thing. Okay, so not really sure what's happening here.
So that seems to be one of... Oh, so we did kill player. Apologies. <laughs> Self. <laughs> Self. Okay, there we go. Um, and no, that shouldn't be self either because it's not going to remember it, uh, which one it is. So character. So we kill the player instead. My bad. Um, uh, there we go. Character. Character. Let's make sure. Okay, that's all fine. Uh, yeah, okay. Cool. That should be fine now. Um, on gesture, we didn't have root motion enabled either. Um, I forgot that that's turned off by default, so apologies. Um, and then on the D, um, is it defense that it's running? What's going on? Pretty sure that's even the wrong clip, isn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be dead five, not defense. So yeah, let's make sure we change that. There we go. Uh, wait till finish. Uh, dead. Um, and then let's turn these off. There we go. That's better. Um, a lot went wrong there. Awesome. So that should be fine. So let's give this a go. Still love the finishers. I'm not going to lie. It's just really cool. Um, yeah, it's just really cool. That looks awesome. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, technically with randomizing, we could have the same, uh, we could have that happen a couple of times. So let's hope I'm going to duplicate, <laughs> duplicate again and again, just to be, just until we at least have one regular death animation. Um, there we go. And that's why I duplicated. Yeah, these finishes are so cool. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I know that's possible when you randomize it. I get that, but what are the odds? Let's just, otherwise I'm just going to run those actions only. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, yeah, that wasn't planned. I know it looks really cool. So we've seen it a lot now. Uh, that was not the plan. Uh, but technically a really easy solution now should be variables hero and just turn this off and then normally Normally that should run just a regular death animation um, So let's try that out It's definitely not maybe not the nicest animation, but it does the job Well, on this one it does. Oh, the layer state might have to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's correct that last small thing. Cool. So let's have a look. So we can remove these because um, we'll just duplicate. We can even remove this one for now. Just be doing one. So um, what we can do obviously is the um, gesture. Uh, stop gesture. And that applies to melee clips as well, so that's good. However, we could actually make it a tiny bit more interesting by doing a gesture um, playing in reaction instead. Um, but let's just try this for now. Let's just see if that um, if that works. Can even do it like no transition in, and maybe do the state first. Let's see, we'll mix and mess around a bit. There we go. <laughs> Would be nice if you actually hit. And that's that's good, actually. Yeah, okay. I'm happy. That's uh that went <laughs> that went better than expected. Awesome. So yeah, that's a good order. Uh, so let's just duplicate this one again, um, drag it in here, um, and then we can duplicate the character a couple of times. Uh, there we go. And there we go. 
then I'll turn that um, bool, bool on again. Now, actually, let's just, we, we've seen the uh, finishers so many times now. Um, so let's just try the death animations one more time just to make sure they're all correct. Um, but that looked good to me. Nice, that's good. Okay, I'm just gonna lock because I'm not hitting. There we go. Awesome, perfect. As you can see, obviously they will line up perfectly like this. Um, but once we start adding the behavior and their movement, we'll never have that issue. So it will all just be good. So yeah, that's it for this video. So in the next video, we'll actually be creating actual skills, uh, but we need a skill menu for that as well. Um, I thought this was a nice introduction because skills will actually oft quite often be really similar to what we just did here. Um, but I thought I'd make the whole death a bit more interesting. I had quite some questions about uh, how to handle death in general. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.